Good afternoon, data lovers, and welcome back to Teradata's possible event here in Los Angeles, California. My name is Savannah Peterson with theCUBE. Absolutely stoked to be joined by Rob Streche today. Rob, this has been more fun than I could have anticipated so far. I, I, well, a data, AI, we had analytics, magic tricks. Magic tricks. We, we had, had some cool stuff. We, we, had, we talked security during Cybersecurity Month. I mean, I, I think we've gotten a lot already, but now we're going to get into the meat of it and where the rubber meets the customer, and the I, rubber meets the road here. We're so. going to talk about making AI real, which I know is a passion yeah. of everyone on this stage. Mina, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. Thank you for having me. This has got to be a very busy week for you. Yes, it's been very busy, but very exciting. Yes, oh, I, I mean, e extremely exciting. What is it that excites you most about where Teradata's at and the engagements you get to have with your customers? Yeah, you know, we, we are seeing such interesting use cases, right? And just to share a few with you, um, for example, you know, our, our, we, we talk to some of the largest financial institutions in the world, and one of the things that they want to do is build out anti-money laundering solutions. The world lost three, tr three trillion dollars to anti-money laundering activities last year. Wow. Which a big part of it goes in funding terrorist organizations, right? So that's, right. you know, it's, it's a mission I am passionate about. But when we talk about anti-money laundering, you know, you have to do, to detect people who are laundering money, you have to do two things. You have to look at graph neural networks to figure out who sent money to whom and who did they send to and how many hops the money made. And you have to look at just troves and troves of information to see if there's any negative news about the person. And, and, and it's very, very interesting because you see traditional machine learning and deep learning and generative AI coming together to solve for an extremely important and an extremely complex use case. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. And, I mean, and, and that's kind of know your customer, right? I mean, is part of that whole thing. With the, yes, part of the whole anti money, money laundering and things. So when you see that, because I, I think this is a very important thing, and we talk about it a lot, is the fact that. Gen AI gets all of the airtime, but still there's a lot of traditional AI and ML that's behind the scenes. And it's really interesting that you brought them, about them working together. Kind of expand on that, because I think that's really very interesting to how organizations are really going to open up and connect into even analytics going forward as well. Yeah, and, and you know, for most of the use cases that we are seeing, we are we are seeing um, traditional AI and Gen AI coming together, and we call it ensemble architecture. So, you know, the use cases are getting so complex, and to solve for them in really meaningful ways, you're going to need multiple models and multiple capabilities, right? And it's not really AI for AI's sake, or Gen AI for Gen AI's sake. It's really, you know, fit for purpose AI. Are we solving the real problems? Are we solving them in a way where they can be productized? Are we solving them in a way with trust and security? Are we solving them in a way where regulators are okay with it? Right, so we have to look at a lot of factors to solve for these complex, complex use cases. I, I do want to share another interesting share them uh, use all with cases. us. We want all the interesting <laughs> use cases. Mia. Um, so um, you know, we work with a very large retailer, and they have about 160,000 products. And wow, they send that's quite a few SKUs. Yeah, they send marketing emails to about four million of their customers and they hyper-personalized those, and they had a 28% uplift in just their sales. Now the same group did another project where wow. they looked at 20,000 women of women's dresses and used uh, Gen AI to look at pic images of those dresses and generate uh, copy. So their copywriting went from 30 minutes per item to three minutes. Wow. And they also realized that the retain, return rate dropped down to 6%, right? Wow. So, so that, you know, we are seeing really impactful work around use cases like that, you know? Um, That's massive. That also eliminates waste on the other end with returns. A lot of returns end yeah, up in the yeah. landfill. So you're not just, you're not only solving that problem and increasing sales in, in the capitalistic sense, you're actually doing good for the planet by being more sustainable yeah. within these business practices. 6% is extremely low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and anything, I think, you know, you touched on a very important topic with AI, sustainability. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if you guys heard the news, they're opening up the Three Mile Island. Yes. I did hear that this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. because AI is power hungry. Yeah. Right? Right. And we've, we really have been maniacally focused on, are we deliver, delivering the right building blocks, you know, their best in class capabilities, and do we have our eye on sustainability as we do that, with trust and security, right? So it's, it's just, it's a passionate topic, right? Yeah. Can we, and 
there's emergence in the market right now around domain specific models, you know? Yeah. So small and medium language models tend to do really well for certain use cases. So we have, a, a, working with another large financial institution, where we're looking at um, troves of emails between their customers as well as their employees to see um, do they honor regulatory compliance? Is there undue pressure, sales pressure on the customers, right? And we can do that really well with a small language model on Teradata just using CPUs. We don't have to use any power intensive compute capabilities for those use cases, right? So, and, and you bring up a really good point. I'm giggling because I have a run GPU sticker on my laptop right now that the audience can't see. But, but I think most people rush to think they need the most powerful NVIDIA chip to get something over the line. It's not necessarily the case. You need to be no. able to do it with the most cost effectiveness, faster inference, and, and to really make AI real for that customer in that yeah, moment. Yeah, and it's, it's again, it you know, touches on fit for purpose AI. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're saying we will meet our customers where they are, whether they're on-prem or in the cloud. We believe in hybrid AI. And and if they, if we need GPUs to solve for something, we will use uh, GPUs. If we need CPUs, you know, we'll use CPUs. You heard the announcement today. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we're very excited to partner with yes. NVIDIA. Exciting collaboration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The possibility of you know, what are we going to do next with with, with this? Um, there are certain use cases with, which will always need GPUs. You know, fine tuning of models, uh, creating vector embedding. So we really wanted to support our customers. For, for, for those needs, and that's the idea behind it. So, so I, I think you, you kind of went down one of the use cases, and I, I think we've kind of wandered around a little bit to the, the point that you were getting at, and which is really interesting, is the operationalization of this, and how, how you make it simpler for organizations, because not everybody's a data scientist, not everybody's a data engineer, and the customers you deal with have differing, differing levels uh, from their platform engineering to their data engineering to their data science. How do you see all of this coming together and what is really Teradata helping with from an op operationalization, if I can get it out, <laughs> perspective. You got it. Yeah. There we go, <laughs> yeah. where did we go? Nailed it. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, and you know, um, when we talk about building blocks to be able to get to that point, right, where we are productizing AI and realizing the potential of AI for our customers, We've delivered extremely performant in database functions. 150 of those customers can use to use them to do feature engineering and a whole lot of other things, right? And then there is so much innovation happening in the open. We really wanted our customers to be able to bring it home. You know, whether it's open source models, whether it's proprietary models, whatever's happening, and they want to bring their own, we enable them to bring them to Teradata very, very easily. You know, we're saying bring um, AI to the data rather than move the data to AI. We have you know, model ops capability to manage the entire life cycle of, um, of your AI models, which is absolutely table stakes right now. You know? um, we actually had a, another use case where our customers were looking, was looking at quality of um, their spot welding, Mm -hmm. And we, we were looking at 4.3 million uh, sensor data, 4.3 billion sensor data reads every day. We trained 9 million models and we deployed 40,000 models in production, right? So you need tooling to be able to manage all of these and make it super easy. So we've really. That's a lot of data, that's a lot of different. I mean, yeah. you just said some very large figures <laughs> right there. So we're talking about a, a, an incredible level of complexity. Yeah, yeah. So it's making AI at scale real for our customers, right? I can tell how much you like doing it. <laughs> I'm a chip designer by training, so anytime you talk about scale, I love, I love that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, yeah. we, are, we are definitely fans of, of scale. How, how do you find the sentiment is, I mean, you're talking about working with huge customers at scale, right? This retail company you mentioned is big. I know you work with some of the largest financial institutions on the planet. How are they internally with that adoption? Are they eager to go on the journey with you? Are they still scared about the investment? What's the culture pulse of the types of organizations that you're working with right yeah, now? Yeah, and I think, I think everybody's on their AI journey. You know, you have to- Whether they want to be or not, I think, at yeah, this point. Yeah, yeah, because I think AI is going to deliver value which we can't um, 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 me achieve without, without it, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, you know, I don't think we can, we can um, uh, control fraud, financial fraud without AI. It would right. be very, very difficult, right? So it just behooves you know, all the financial institutions to do it. So they want to embrace it. I think it's just understanding how to get, how to, get to that point where you can productize AI. Productizing AI is challenging, right? Mm -hmm. And can we make it easy for our customers along their journey? So our customers are on a spectrum of journey. You know, every single customer we have is going to do multiple AI use cases, not just one. 
right? right. You know, they're going to get started with one, then they're going to move to the next one, and we move to the next one. There's just a lot of um, uh, news in the industry at the moment also saying that AI adoption is low, mm -hmm. right? And I think we should we should look at it a little bit closely because AI adoption for, for our customers, enterprise customers, around co-pilots, chatbots is high. These regulatory compliance use cases, mm -hmm. these it's it's getting it's getting there. For some of the tough workloads, they're starting on that journey. So it's going to be a journey. And you know, we have to make sure at Teradata that we create the right building blocks because AI is going to evolve, right? Yes. The capabilities and the innovation that happens is so rapid, that's, that's going to evolve. We are trying to make sure that we have the right building blocks, that we can bring that innovation to our customers to you know, really achieve the impossible. Yeah, I th yeah well you, you, you bring up a really good point, is, is, is it is always evolving, and I love it with a lot of your product line, it's a BYO, whether that be analytics, models, whatever it might be, it, it sounds, what I've heard from everyone today is really the, the commitment to be with your customers on that journey every step of the way. Because if you are embarking on this investment, it's a huge amount of money up front, even just to get started and to get, to get playing. So how are you, I can imagine you're constantly trying to think about what's coming next and how you can adapt the product to, to reflect that. What does that process look like for you and your team internally? Yeah, and you know, I wanted to touch on that uh, on, on on what you said. Um, we are trying to make it not expensive, right? Love that. So, Who doesn't so, want to hear that right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. So you know, we've we've created capabilities like AI Unlimited, where for if you're a data scientist and you want to experience, you know, all of the capabilities that Clearscape Analytics offers, you can quickly spin up a node. You know, you can you can experiment or you can get some results out of AI and then you can shut it down. Right, and it's extremely powerful, and we'll have it integrated in Microsoft Fabric and available in November of this year, which is really exciting. That is exciting, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. But you know, for all of the AI and analytics capabilities on Teradata, our focus has been adoption, right? So they yeah. are available to our customers for free. So if you're using any of the Clearscape in analytics capabilities in database functions or any of the bring your own uh, capabilities, our vector store capabilities, there's no additional cost to our customers, right? Because we wow. know there's a skills investment and other investments that the customers have to make, you know? We just want to partner with them and, and go along on the journey of AI. So how, because I, 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 I think going beyond the AI, you have the analytics part as well and you're, you're servicing out a lot of that and you have kind of an open framework for that. How does that really bring together the power of the cloud and the power of open and being able to bring those integrations in? Yeah, um, you know, uh, one of our strategy has been open and connected because we, we wanted to bring the best in class of frameworks and toolings to our customer, be it for analytics or, or AI, so we've made um, really key third party integrations with some of the le leading uh, frameworks and tooling out there. And then um, the open part is bring the innovation that's in the open to, to Teradata itself. And with, with that strategy, with our open analytics framework and all the, all the deep integrations that we have with partners, we, we've, we've tried to make it super easy for our customers to experiment on a use case, you know, move it from POC to a pilot, and then finally move it into production. And when they move it in production, they know that they can do it at scale, they can do it with trust and security, and then they have, they can manage the entire life cycle of those AI models with, with us. Yeah, I think that's why it's important because, it, I mean, we, we've seen that 84% or so are kind of, when they talk about why they're not in production, it's because they're actually in POC still. So to your point, it's, and maybe they have one case in, in production. Are you seeing that this is helping, especially the in database functions, it's, it's kind of a chaining of different AI together that's helping move people from POC to production because now they see the ROI out of that AI. Yeah, you know, that goes a, goes a long way, identifying, yeah. identifying an ROI because then that, that gives them the motivation and, and the ability to make a case internally to go after, go after a particular use case. Um, Implementing AI and uh, taking it into production has a timeline to it. You know, we've looked at every stage of what our customers have to do to start with a POC and take it into production, and looked at which part can we optimize, and how can we optimize that, right? Yeah. So if if delivering a feature store so that they can reuse some of the feature engineering across different different machine learning models, we want to be able to do that, right? If it's seamlessly using um, um, 
uh, in database functions, we are enabling that. You know, we are making it super easy. We made it super easy for them to use three design patterns, like we talked about earlier. They can easily bring their own uh, their own model. You know, they can use the PMML format or the Onyx format. They can now bring their large language models, use GP GPUs. They can even use cloud hosted models. Right? And then with MLOps, because they, we have to be able to manage the life cycle of a model, right? Mm -hmm. they have that ability to do that. And you know, over the next year, we're just maniacally focused on bringing more capabilities to meet them where they are, in cloud or on-prem. Uh, you know, we believe in multiple platform. Whatever we deliver on-prem is available on the, on the clouds as well. And um, we, we just want to make sure that we're easing their journey and really helping them honor their data regulation, their data data um, uh, residency compliance, requirements, yeah, I mean, and compliance issues. You know, yeah. it's a complex all the sexy stuff. It's a complex yeah. landscape. Yeah, yeah. It absolutely is. You mentioned that that fervent focus for the next twelve months. I'm curious. I want to ask you a question since you're a fabulous guest, and we would certainly love to have you back on the show. What do you hope to be able to say twelve months from now that you can't yet say today? I think. Um, I would be able to say that we have more customers in production with AI. Yes. Right? And, and at Teradata, we have the world's most confidential data. We don't have it. Our customers are, have their most, co the most mm -hmm. confidential data on Teradata. So, you know, it would be absolutely, I would consider next year to be an absolutely phenomenal success if I can say we've built some complex use cases, we've brought more customers into production with AI with these just interesting and fabulous use cases, right? And then we're on a journey to get do more and more and more, right? That would be success to me. I love it. Well, I, I look forward to celebrating your success thank and you. Teradata's success next year when we're here. Rena, thank you so much for taking the time and a busy thank week. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, our pleasure. And Rob, thank you. We're having, we're just really getting to the meat of it here today. Absolutely. I'm Go I'm dig in deep. I'm Strong start <laughs> after lunch. And thank all of you for tuning in wherever you might be on this beautiful rock. We're in Los Angeles, California at Teradata Possible. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.